Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Ask the Experts 411, Make Resilience a Reality in Azure. My name is Adam Carroll. I'm a product manager at NetApp, and I'm joined here today by Rowan Daly, a global black belt from Microsoft, and Geert Van Tillingen, another colleague of mine, a product manager from NetApp. And Geert, what do we have to talk about today? Yeah, thanks, Adam, and uh, hi, uh, good to see you, Ron, and uh, love to have this uh, conversation with you guys, and uh, looking forward to the questions in this chat, uh, or in this uh, session. Um, in this session, we're going to talk about, um, first and foremost, again, a little rehash on why we built Azure Net of Files um, together with Microsoft, and what the typical uh, use cases and scenarios are. And then we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the um, new uh, and broader set of Azure Net of Files resiliency concepts. Uh, we've added a whole uh, a slew of new features to Azure Net of Files recently, uh, and that makes for a really nice um, resiliency architecture. Uh, and we're going to cover uh, quite a few of those. So um, with that being said, let's quickly dive into why did we build Azure Net of Files? And um, the reason for Azure Net of Files starts with a context and the context is files in the cloud right so when we started this journey about three four years ago together with microsoft we came to the conclusion that about two-thirds of the enterprise applications being sap being oracle being being a variety of uh, uh, database style or hpc style uh, applications uh, were still running on premises and out of those workloads we typically see that about 50 percent or roughly half of them uh, are actually file based applications and and um, as customers are uh, moving towards the cloud and indicate to the to to us that uh, these enterprises want to migrate and move those uh, NAS based workloads into the cloud, they also often mention to us that they don't want to sacrifice on what they have and what they're familiar with in their on-premise environments, right? So uh, typically customers run these enterprise applications with a high performance, uh, typically with low latency associated with that performance. Uh, they really de rely on those applications from a business perspective and therefore uh, would really uh, need a high reliability and therefore high availability type deployment. Uh, and oftentimes rely on advanced data management features and data management features in the terms of uh, advanced backup and recoverability using snapshots, advanced replication uh, across uh, multiple locations. Uh, and there's ample reasons why customers uh, want to do that, right? They want to move to the cloud for you know, innovative purposes or cloud, uh, cloud first strategies, data center closures, uh, but they don't and they do not want to or can't give up on those applications that they have been running and their, their business has been relying upon already for years. And uh, oftentimes these customers don't really have the opportunity or the ability to re-architect everything and to make it cloud native, right? So uh, instead of uh, having to uh, force those customers to to change their application landscapes and uh, start making use of uh, cloud native services uh, end to end, uh, many of those applications don't really uh, you know, lend itself to, to, to be done so, right? So uh, customers indicate to us that they want to move, right? So they want to basically be able to pick up those application workloads, uh, their file associated data uh, with it, and pretty much rehost them in the cloud. And that means that in the cloud, they need to have access to an enterprise NAS file service. And that's what Azure Net of Files is all about, right? It gives you enterprise high performance, low latency storage with a high level of reliability and very advanced data management features. And especially NetApp customers that are uh, familiar with the technology and the capabilities are uh, very, very happy with it. And that uh, technology is now being brought to Azure as an Azure native uh, first party Microsoft service. So readily available from the portal, consumable like any other cloud service uh, that Azure provides, right? So with that, we can now start looking at deployment models and resiliency models that, uh, that really help customers build uh, enterprise grade and enterprise reliant architectures in a cloud fashion, right? So that's what the focus is of this uh, this session. We're talk talk going to talk about uh, real quick about what that means from a reliability standpoint and what it means from an enterprise data management uh, standpoint and, and all of that combined. So, so if we look at a high level architecture and we look at this from a conceptual standpoint, 
uh, we can really quickly uh, obviously see that customers use Azure uh, from a regional and a typically a paired regional perspective uh, to provide high uh, high level of data recoverability and disaster recoverability, right? So oftentimes customers have their applications already sitting in Azure, uh, leveraging Azure Net of Files for a long time uh, in production, uh, leveraging uh, NFS or SMB or even now SMB uh, multi-protocol volumes uh, alike and have their virtual machines connected to those uh, to those volumes, uh, providing this high performance, low latency storage and uh, and advanced capabilities, right? And and now customers also uh, oftentimes are using Azure Net of Files in a DR perspective as well, and are now relying on host-based replication, uh, replicating data across the regions, uh, typically between uh, fast storage or fast tier storage on the primary side and slower tier storage and therefore more cost-effective storage on the secondary side. But again, leveraging host-based replication uh, in an SAP HANA context or in an Oracle context for instance right so let's talk about what we've done uh, over the last couple of months and what we've been uh, what we, we can be doing now for customers from a resiliency perspective so first and foremost it's noteworthy that we've increased the SLA the availability SLA of Azure Net of Files by design out of the gate uh, with 4.9's availability now so that means that uh, without any uh, further configuration any volume that you provision on Azure Net of Files will receive or will have a 4.9 availability. Uh, and that's uh, uh, fairly high compared to other uh, cloud native uh, storage services, right? So to build upon that, uh, customers can now rely on that uh, without any any complications and uh, complicated uh, configurations. Um, on top of that, Azure Net of Files allows you to data protect very efficiently, right? So snapshots are being built in. Uh, snapshots can already be uh, restored instantly to new volumes uh, and can also be restored in uh, place without any data movement, right? So that means that data volumes can be snapshotted and therefore backed up in a matter of seconds irrespective of size and irrespective of workloads, but can also be restored in a matter of seconds, irrespective of size and irrespective of the amount of data change, right? So imagine a database that is an Oracle database of let's say 20 terabytes. It's a fairly sizable database. How do you back it up? Well, snapshots will allow you to instantly and back up and restore that uh, volume and therefore the database in a matter of seconds, right? So that's something that's available. Revert is uh, in preview available for customers, uh, easy to sign up for, but we've added more capabilities now, right? So instead of having to rely on host-based replication, we have now recently announced Azure Net of Files cross-region replication in public preview, which allows you to do a couple of things. First and foremost, you can replicate at the storage level, the volumes and snapshot at a very efficient manner across regions and across volumes between different tiers as well, right? So you can replicate an ultra volume in product production and replicate it to a standard tier in uh, in the DR side for cost savings purposes. You can also replicate in different, let's say, schedules. So you can have a, a frequent rec uh, replication schedule for highly important volumes, and you can have a, a, a more infrequently a replication schedule uh, for lower uh, lo lower importance uh, the, the volumes uh, alike, right? So you can really pick and choose your SLA from a DR and recoverability standpoint. So that's been uh, that's already uh, possible in preview now, uh, but on top of that, we wanted to enable that in order to avoid the reliance of host-based replication, right? So host-based replication then, then allows you to, or, or use, sorry, using storage-based replication, cross-region replication, allows you to turn off a whole bunch of virtual machines that you'd normally have to have enabled uh, for host-based replication, which is an immediate cost saving. But on top of that, Customers want to leverage the data and the DR side for a couple of purposes. So, for instance, test dev and test and dev environments, right? So, customers want to be able to use a clone, use a snapshot, clone it off to a new volume, and create a test dev environment for their application and leverage the DR uh, copy of that. So that can be done with Azure Net of Files as well, right? So while the replication is still ongoing, you can pick a snapshot and replicate it off of, uh, clone it off of to a new volume for test and dev purposes. 
but also customers may want to do DR testing. So in, let's say, uh, uh, try out if their DR uh, uh, environments actually work. But in order to do so, they obviously need to also check whether that performance is up to standards as well. So not only can you create a new volume out of that snapshot on the DR side, you can also now dynamically in place change the tier of that volume as well to move it off of standard uh, all the way up to ultra. So you basically can tune your performance uh, from a, 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 a test and development standpoint, but also from a DR uh, test standpoint, as well as an actual DR uh, function as well. So I really wanted to quickly give a little bit of insight into those resiliency concepts, and then uh, I'll open the floor, uh, Adam, to any questions that the customer, uh, the customers or audience may have. Well, that's great. Well, thank you. Well, we we have a few, uh, and I've been trying to uh, to collate them as they come in. Let's start with one about cross-regional replication. Um, and specifically, is it supported for SAP HANA workloads? And if not, um, do we know if it will be in the future? So is the question for me or Ron? Um, I'm happy to take it. Uh, I'm sorry for you, Garrett. My, my, my apologies. Thank yes, you. yeah. So absolutely, cross-regional replication is irrespective of any application. It works uh, with any application that can uh, manage uh, and create application consistent snapshots, which SAP uh, HANA environments can do, such that those snapshots can be uh, created consistently on the primary site or the production site, and then, then they are replicated across in an uh, application consistent fashion as well, such that any database can be recovered on the DR site with the set uh, SLA based on application consistent snapshots. Okay, and the next question is for Roan. has to do with dynamically adjusting performance levers, uh, levels, excuse me. And specifically, the mm -hmm. question is, what, what can you tell us about that? I've heard something about it. What can you tell me? Yeah, um, thanks, Adam. So, so that's a, that's, I think that's a very important feature um, that the service provides. And, and what it basically is, is the fact that you can, and it's really an in-place service change for the volume that so you don't need to migrate any any form of data and what the functionality enables you to do is to meet the, your workload demand so let's say for example again you know talking about um for example here we're talking about a database you might have times during a, a monthly cycle where you need to ensure higher performance for that database so you what you're able to do is dynamically move the tier up to the premium tier or the premium service level without impacting your workload no need to migrate the data migrate the data move it to another volume or anything like that it's just a matter of a service tier change and when 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 your production work is 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 um, needs to be downsized or, or you're not you don't need a necessary throughput and performance you know at that particular time in the month you can down level you know the tier so it gives you that flexibility and i think you know that's one of the key, key um, capabilities from a resiliency point of view okay great thank you for that let's go back to gear for the next question it has to do with when when or if we'll be able to support active active sql databases between two different regions so for SQL Server, we are still working with the SQL Server team on the validation and certification of the SQL Server on Azure Data Files for production workloads. Uh, one key feature that uh, is needed is uh, CA shares, is something that is going to be available in, uh, likely in this um, in this semester. Um, so from that moment on, uh, we'd certainly be able to um, drive those workloads in, into production as well using Azure Data Files. OK, and then going back to Roan, we'll just do a little bit of back and forth here. It has to do uh, specifically with uh, replication. And what can we talk about in terms of replication that's either new or that's particularly interesting? Yeah, so so um, again, you know, we mentioned that earlier in the conversation, but, you know, customers who are, you know, on-prem NetApp customers would be very familiar with the, the stat mirror capability. And, and, and what this does, it allows us to Take and, and we're really replicating blocks, you know, over the network into a, a second um, instance of your 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 ANF service. And so, from a from a high available point of view, what we're able to do is you're able to replicate your your, your volumes over into whether it be an NFS or, or an SMB volume over into an, an another ANF service in another region. And you'll have the ability to determine your replication frequency 
for example, if it's 10 minutes, you know, every hour, you know, or, or once a day as the need or, or the case may be. So if you think about, you know, what that helps you to do, um, and this is some, you know, future capabilities that will come in the service. You'll have the ability, for example, in a from a DR testing point of view, to read from that sec secondary copy, right? It's active. Rep it's, it's the secondary copy is still active during replication, but if you're doing DR testing, you can see how it helps you because you can, you know, you can test your 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 application in a recovery scenario, you know, from that DR location. And then, you know, as I said, you know, some additional capabilities, for example, failover over on demand, you know, which will come in the future. So the idea again, you know, here is around scale and enabling resiliency in a DR uh, context. You, you're, you're taking your, 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 your file based workloads, replicating them over into a second region, you know, having them available, you know, for you in the, in the case of a, a disaster scenario. OK, so that thank you for that. And I, I've noticed that there's a, there's a common theme and a handful of different questions. So if we go back to Geert for a moment, I'll read two of those questions, but there's several more that are asking a similar a similar type of thing. So one is just very simply, what's the upper limit of transfer? And the other has to do with um, how does how does Azure NetApp files handle extremely large, extremely large on the order of 100 terabyte plus uh, data sizes? And so maybe maybe you could talk a little bit about Azure NetApp files and how well uh, it copes uh, with very large size data transfers and data sets. Yeah, so Azure Data Files is very capable of handling large scale workloads, right? So uh, volumes can scale from, uh, let's say, a mere 100 gigabytes all the way up to 100 terabytes in size, and you can actually scale that dynamically and on the fly. So as your workload increases from a capacity standpoint, you can just basically add more capacity to those volumes non-disruptively um, and therefore can handle those workloads very well. It also scales performance uh, associated and linearly with that uh, with that capacity so the more performance you need the, the more performance you need will will depend on the size of the volume uh, that you create right so it is very capable and with that being said also the replication technology being used to replicate volumes between a primary and dr region is very efficient because it does replication at the block level and only looks at deltas right so only the change blocks between snapshots are actually uh, being replicated and that typically accounts for and that's a rule of thumb of anywhere between one to three to five percent of your actual volume size on a daily basis right so with that you basically get a full replica of your data set with each increment uh, but it only rec replicates effectively about five uh, well let's say anywhere between one and five percent of that data Moving Azure data into Azure on Azure Data Files kind of depends on the application, right? So we have done a large number of migrations all the way from just simple file shares to database applications, HANA applications, HPC workloads, etc. And the rep, let's say the migration technology being used kind of depends a little bit on the application. Uh, and we have various tools and uh, capabilities to support those uh, migrations, uh, even online. Uh, a good example is we've done a, a team center migration to Azure of uh, 210 terabytes in size. Uh, we actually done it twice um, in a matter of three days using a uh, very efficient uh, data migration and synchronization uh, technology. So reach out to your local ANF um, expert to guide you through those migrations. And then just a follow up question for you, Geert, on that. Would this work as a replacement for a physical exadata box if we're looking to move our Oracle into the Azure? That's class? a very good question, actually. And as a matter of fact, we've done quite a few of those already. Uh, so the answer is full, full and wholeheartedly yes. Um, data, let's say, migrations off of exadata is an interesting, let's say, exercise. Uh, migrations are not straightforward because my uh, exadata systems are very tuned for its specific purpose. However, uh, we can do those migrations very efficiently by, uh, by migrating the workload, uh, assizing the associated workload on an uh, Azure infrastructure, from an Azure infrastructure perspective, not only from the VM level, but obviously also the ANF level, and then tune the database to make sure that it uses the full potential of flash-based storage in Azure. So yes, we've done quite a few of those already. Yeah, I think you you would add to that that you know uh, um, we have the tools that can help that you know process to 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 um to seamlessly happen you know such as the XCP tool to help with the data moving you know into Azure. 
So let's just stick with you for a minute, Rowan. We, so if we can move into um, a bit of a licensing question. So specifically, how is Azure NetApp Files licensed? And could you comment <laughs> on how the licensing of Azure NetApp Files relates in a situation that would include multiple subscriptions and or multiple VNets? That's a good question. I mean, so it's uh, we, we mentioned this earlier. It's a first party, you know, Azure service. So all you got to do is when you purchase your Azure subscription, you go into uh, as you'd go, you'd go pick your compute, you'd go pick your networking. You just go into the Azure portal and you have the ability to to start the service. It, it, it you know, if you have a subscription, it deducts from your, your subscription. Let's say you have an enterprise agreement. As a matter of fact, even if you you know you, you're doing pay as you go, you know, once you turn on the service, you have the ability to pay for that the service, you know, through your your your, your regular vehicle, whether it's an enterprise agreement, you know, or if you have a pay as you go subscription. Yes, from a um and we have detailed guidance around, you know, it, it's available across VNets, right? So you can definitely configure um, the ANF service in a hub and spoke scenario and, you know, for for um, and have resources within the VNets be able to connect to that resource. Um, you know, let's say, for example, um, and we have guidance on that, for example, in a scale deployment for our WVD um, or VDI um, deployment. So that's one way, but definitely, yes, you know, it's possible to to um, to configure it in a, in a multi VNet um, scenario or have it available to be connected in a multi VNet scenario. OK, thank you for that. We're going to go back to Geert here and we have a Snapmare question. So can can you have a Snapmare relationship between Azure NetApp files and an on prem NetApp appliance? Not today. <laughs> so that technology is uh, applied in an Azure context. So cross region replication uh, actually leverages snapshot technology between Azure NetApp files uh, 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 storage volumes uh, between regions. Um, we don't have that capability from an on-prem to Azure uh, net of files perspective today. Okay, and then um, this one will just be if either one of you knows, can Azure net of files be managed through MS Storage Explorer? F who yeah. do, who's the question for? <laughs> it was any one of us. Let's go with Roan and, and we may Roan, you go pick uh, it. We'll get back to you on that one. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, so Storage Explorer is a, um, a solution that we use um, for the resources that run on, on blob storage, right? So understand this, right? You know, um, Azure um, ANF is, is part of our Azure dedicated service and it's presented from, you know, um, and then it's it's uh, an environment that's, it, that's part of that Azure dedicated service. It doesn't run on blob, right? Kind of giving you a little bit more detail of the back end of the service, but um, so right now storage, Ex it doesn't leverage, you can't leverage storage explorer, you know, to connect to it. OK, and then and then we have one for Geert, and I, I'm, I'm very excited about this question. So if I'm leveraging Azure NetApp file storage, can I use Azure Analytics services against the data managed by NetApp? And Geert, maybe maybe feel free to comment on uh, some of the, some of the other Azure services that may or may not be usable with data um, that has that's being managed with ANF. So the, the primary aim for Azure NetApp files is to run uh, applications in an IS perspective and migrate those workloads off of an on-prem environment into Azure and uh, maintaining and retaining those, uh, let's say, on-premise like uh, performance and data management capabilities. Um, uh, with that being said, we are working with Microsoft on deeper integration into uh, a variety of Azure uh, native services uh, going forward. Uh, one of the uh, integrations we have already done and further strengthening, uh, strengthening our is uh, with AKS, so Azure uh, Kubernetes Services, for instance. Um, we're working, uh, we have integrations already with um, Azure Batch and some of the machine learning capabilities. Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, the service that you just mentioned. Maybe Ron can uh, look at that or comment on that more from an Azure perspective than I can from an ANF perspective, perspective, but we are uh, indeed working on more and deeper integration with uh, Azure Native, Native Services going forward. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. Um, that's not something that I know um, is is currently you know on the roadmap. But you know, I concur. You know, with the the, the things that you mentioned a while ago, um, uh, Gerd. I think you know one of the key things is is you know especially around the monitoring you know, um, side of the house that is, you know, the direction, one of the key directions, you know, for integration, but nothing with Azure Analytics Service at the moment. 
Okay, so I think I think we have time for one or two more questions, but I do want to make sure we get to cover this one. Um, this will be for Garrett. What tool do we need to use to migrate our load to Azure NetApp files, which is about 60 terabytes of file servers, NTFS? So one of the tools that could be leveraged uh, free of charge is actually a NetApp's Cloud Sync service. Uh, Cloud Sync allows you to replicate and synchronize data between on-prem um, multiple sources to uh, Azure and the files volumes. Uh, so you can replicate even from um, object storage uh, in the public cloud to Azure and the files as well. But obviously you can also rep replicate your data from SMB to SMB volumes and then retain your uh, NTFS uh, uh, permissions, ACLs uh, and all of that good stuff. So CloudSync is certainly something to look at, um, but there's a variety of other tools that customers are leveraging, leveraging in a similar fashion. Uh, so from that perspective, there's ample choice. So, so um, you know, along the line of migration, I think this is something that we, we also have to, um, you know, mention, Garrett, is, is the whole availability of multi-protocol support, right? And I think that is one of the key, you know, features, you know, of the service or, or platform. And, you know, when we think about, you know, customers who are running both, you know, Linux and Windows based workloads, and it might be, for example, a customer who is doing, I don't know, I mean, they might be doing high level analytics and they're, they're using, you know, their, their Linux machine to actually, uh, or Linux uh, servers to generate the data and then doing the visualization you know on on using uh, the windows platform for example power bi for example one of the this i, I think this is a, is a key differentiator because there's no need now to copy the data over to another volume or anything like that because both windows clients and linux clients can access the same volume you know um because of the multi-protocol support and we can do it consistently without any issues Okay, so I, I think we have time for one at the most two more questions. Uh, could we go to the, the final slide? Just I, We just want to make sure we don't forget uh, to give you a chance to see where you can go next. If you have uh, additional questions, there's a link in the bottom left of the slide that's being shown. Um, HTTPS colon slash slash aka.ms slash Microsoft Ignite slash featured partner slash NetApp. Or if it's easier, you can just go to the main Ignite page Go under um, the partner page and you'll find our NetApp area. Go into the NetApp area for the next hour after this session is over. We have live experts um, from NetApp uh, ready to answer your questions. As you can see from what's being shown here, there's a chance to enter uh, to win a very uh, compelling and valuable prize, uh, some camera equipment for those of you that may have um, online content creation needs as we are living in the world of a pandemic. And I'll leave this information up for you. We'll take this last question. This will be for Roan. And this can Azure NetApp files be added to Active Directory for on-premise users to connect to their workstations? Yes, um, I, I, that, 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 the, the, the short answer is yes, seamlessly, easy, easily. I mean, if you're running Windows Active Directory, it's a seamless way in the in the in the service portal to integrate your on-premise um, AD environment into into um, and have that volume presented to your users from 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 Azure to your users on-prem. It's, it's, it's very easy with, with, with Azure NetApp files. OK, and I, actually, so that was quick. So let's just do one more. This will be for Geert. Uh, this will be the last one. What is the advantage of moving out of Exadata into Azure? Cost efficiencies? What about performance? As your client, what's in it for me? Or what's there for me? I say? Yeah, I kind of answered the question in the chat real quick, but uh, I can touch on it. Uh, I mean, obviously, it kind of depends on the customer's cloud strategy, right? So, so oftentimes, customers have a cloud incentive right so they want to go to the cloud because of data center closures or opex reasons or innovation reasons many many reasons why customer may, may want to have to uh, may want to run to uh, or migrate to azure however oftentimes they are faced with the situation that they have those highly demanding enterprise applications are spinning in their data centers and notice that those are hard to move to Azure given uh, various Azure resource constraints, performance uh, re you know, requirements that those applications have, reliance on uh, a file-based storage, an enterprise NAS-based storage, uh, and therefore are blocked and basically can't move and can't fulfill their cloud incentives. Now with Azure Native Files, those application migrations are typically unblocked. So really have customers have the chance to 
move those mig move and migrate those workloads that are otherwise stuck in the data center. And that's what we oftentimes see. And that's kind of what's in it for a customer. Obviously, further we can scale workloads very efficiently. We can, you know, dynamically increase performance and decrease cost if you need to. So there's a lot of advantages that the service provide, uh, that any cloud service provide, if you apply those cost uh, uh, sort of cloud economics to the to, to your application in the landscape. And that brings us to the top of the hour. So thank you very much, Roan. Thank you, Geert. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of Microsoft Ignite 2020. And remember, Azure NetApp files and NetApp experts are available for the next hour at our virtual booth, which you can find on the NetApp page off the main Microsoft Ignite page. Thank you very much.